most important thing, and it really is about movement. Um, you, uh, I, I mean, uh, I guess we we're listening to a little little training that was talking about how the gym memberships have gone up in the past, you know, few years, like more than doubled. So that's great. People are getting their bodies into the gym. They are working out. Wonderful. But yet our obesity can, continues to increase. Obesity rise, rates. Our obesity rates. So something is going, something's not right. And really the, the biggest thing is, is even though we are working out, maybe we're saying, I'm going to go to the gym in the morning and do my stuff, or I'm going to do that YouTube workout in the morning before work or your lunch break, or you go to the gym after and you're getting your workout in. But what happens during the rest of the day? You're sedentary. That's a, actually, I'm kind of victim of that and guilty of that most days of the week, unfortunately. I find myself at a computer seated quite a bit. I do take calls and I walk a lot, but man, I'm telling you, this is going to be perfect for me to leave this meeting, this call today, and I am going to commit to doing the things we talk about today. Right. Because it makes so much mm -hmm. sense to me. It's such common sense. Yes. So the biggest thing that we need to do uh, is incorporate short exercise set. Well, I don't even want you to think exercise sessions. It's movement. Um, throughout your day, whether it's, I mean, the, the studies are showing that it's best if you're doing every 30 minutes, like two minutes of activity. And now yeah. this could be going on a short walk. This could be air squats next to your desk in your office. This could be push-ups. whatever it, it's going to be, whatever works for you. I, you know, however your living situation is like specifically, I just told Ryan, I said, it'd be easiest for him to just step up next to his desk chair and do a minute of air squats and a minute of push-ups every 30 minutes. So what did he do like five minutes ago? Hey, he set a timer on his phone, a yeah. reminder on his phone to just let him know every when it's every 30 minutes and then he'll just get up and do it. So um, I want Ryan to, right now, first of all, if, if that doesn't work for you, there's other ways to do it, right? Say we eat three meals a day. Think about doing a 20 minute walk before your meal, 20 minute walk after, right? And by walk, this doesn't have to be anything extreme. This doesn't have to be some heart rate driven walk. The goal is muscle contraction. And I want Ryan to dive in a little bit on what the muscle contraction um, is doing to our cells. Oh, yeah, I think it, everybody's probably familiar with insulin and its role with diabetes and managing blood sugar, which obviously blood sugar goes up and it goes down and it goes through these multiple cycles throughout a day around meals and food and consumption of calories. But it's really insulin sensitivity or insulin resistance is what we're trying to sort of overcome. We don't want to fall victim to insulin resistance that's the early stages of the pre-diabetes kind of phase into the type 2 diabetes type 1 at least i'm so sorry the video seems to keep glitching i change the res i'm hoping you guys hear me just fine yes, i'm watching the comments on. but you know guys the thing is if we're eating throughout the day and multiple times and small snacks and little sugar things here little sugar things there our bodies are always kind of figuring out how to manage this sugar load, which isn't normal for our body. So when you have this glucose circulating in the blood, ideally it comes in boluses. It's a big bolus. It's a big meal bolus. It's a big shot. Boom. Your body responds accordingly right away. The pancreas, the rest of the system goes into it's the parasympathetic nervous system. So you've got this rest and digest process. And then that subsides. And then your body goes back into that, that cleaned up, fasted state where you're ready for that performance again. And you can go back through that cycle multiple times a day, but it shouldn't be constant food, constant sugar elevations throughout the day. And it, Can yes, I interrupt please. you real quick? Yeah. So when he's saying this about sugar, I don't want you to think it's the fact that you're eating sugar because you might be sitting there like, I watch my sugar. I don't eat my sugar. This He's not talking to me. Anytime we eat foods, food, we get a rise in our blood sugar, right. okay? It's circulating in, exactly. in our blood. All so food. yeah, so Any when he's calories. talking about that, I want you to just think about your blood sugar is always going up when we eat. Sometimes higher, like I call them, I call them peaks and valleys, or sometimes it's rolling hills, which we would prefer. Okay, sorry to interrupt. No, 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 it's absolutely fine. But the problem that more, the more and more of those calories that we eat, especially the poor quality, the nutrient poor stuff, the, the calorie rich stuff, so those processed food that are in packages that cost a dollar twenty, and they're like seriously two hundred eighty calories, twenty five grams of carbs or whatever. You, you just—it's crazy because over time, then we build weight, right? Then we're gaining weight. Then we're becoming a little bit more metabolically inflamed, or metabolically dysfunctional, and then you're running into the situation where the pancreas is releasing more insulin and becomes insulin resistant. So the insulin isn't doing what it was supposed to do. This is the cornerstone of type two diabetes, but it's really the foundation of chronic disease. It's, I would say it's like it, the root cause. It's of the root all cause. Disease. 
the yes. things that we're going to talk, talk about today, the one, one, two minutes every 30, is serious people that move a lot, the Sardinian, Italy, the Costa Ricans, part of California, they move, they go up and down hills or up and down steps, they move all, all the day. time, all day. all day, whereas I go and I crush a 45-minute, 60-minute workout, Maybe I walk a little bit, of course, with round meals, but I'm sedentary through the rest of the day. I'm, that's done. I'm not going to do that anymore, because over time, if we, if you, in, if you implore, employ, if you employ these strategies, you can cut your your all core, all car, all cars, all cause mortality of the chronic diseases that all come secondary to obesity by up to fifty percent. Right. So you're talking about like neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, which are so incredibly scary, but here we go. That's what we're talking about. Cancers, uh, hypertension, uh, hyperlipidemia and different dyslipidemias with cholesterol. You know, these things, diabetes, of course, up to 50% reduction in all cause mortality, just because you're moving your body consistently throughout the day, not in just one big, like bolus. Right. 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 And, and the studies are really saying that, that, I mean, it completely defeats the purpose. If you get this nice big workout in and then you're sedentary the whole time, I mean, being sedentary all day just kind of squashes out that workout. And it's really unfortunate because, you know, we, we think we're doing good because exercise is, is amazing for you. And and this little walking stuff is in addition to that gym work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, or, sure. or not a gym, but like you can be doing this stuff at home. Again, it doesn't have to be a, a big financial requirement, whatever works for you. But you need to get in. You need to get in your few, a uh, couple strength training sessions a week, you know, one to two high intensity interval workouts mm -hmm. a week work on your zone two or your endurance training. You need to get those in. So you set aside time for that, right? Whether it's like say an hour in the morning, an hour, you know, at night, again, whatever works for you. And then you incorporate these movements throughout the day. And it's, again, it's about the muscle contraction. So I know many people do the um, treadmill desk, which is absolutely amazing. And you don't have to walk fast, two miles an hour. You're mm -hmm. just, you're just, that muscle contraction is going all the time. It doesn't have, you don't have to be using it all day, but think about if you were just using it, you know, every 30 minutes, you were just like, I'm going to jump on my treadmill desk and, you know, instead of staying seated. So many ways that you can do it. And if, if you have a dog, I mean, think about how much your dog would love if you're working from home and you just put your leash on your dog every 30 minutes to go on a quick walk up and down the street. I mean, I know our dogs would be very excited. For sure. Yeah. So there's so many ways to do it and you we just cannot stress how important it is for you. And it's important for that muscle contraction. So again, if doing air squats, you know, works for you, do those air squats. Again, it's the, the most benefit is two minutes, about every 30 minutes. I mean, you could be doing this while you're in your kitchen cooking, doing the dishes. I mean, just getting that movement in. They even say, make, have fun with it. Do like a little dance party after dinner, you know, all about movement. So that's the biggest thing with increasing your metabolism. And like Ryan said, we see those with our blue zones. They are the healthiest uh, people, live the longest. I mean, really, really crazy. Um, so we need to make sure. Again, it's not crazy. Forward. It's like the, the actually simplified in such a way that sure. I'm so relatable and it actually struck a chord with me. Like, so I'm actually excited about this Zoom. I'm very excited about this Zoom. Right. Because sometimes you look at those, the blue zones and you look at the life they, they live. Um, and they might be enjoying their red wine every night and doing yeah. but but what what they're doing is moving their bodies all the time and also living very stress-free lives. Um, but there's also other things that we can do that simply help uh, you know increase our metabolism. And a lot of it has to do with having the right nutrients, having the right vitamins. Um, a lot of this is your omega threes, your um, which is in our factor four and turmeric as well. Um, and Simple vitamins in our multivitamin, your B vitamins are very good for um, increasing metabolism. Vitamin C sure. plays a role. Um, so your vitamin, I said the Bs, like niacin, B6, B12, all in our multivitamins. Magnesium, which we know plays a role in over 300 enzymatic reactions in the body. And one of those is metabolism. Um, another one is sleep. And guess what? Lack of sleep disrupts your metabolism and your hormones. So you need to be working on all these things um, so your body is working its best for you. Um, and, and, it, and it doesn't have to be that complicated. It doesn't have to be some magic pill in a bottle that's costing you, you know, $120 a month, you know, telling you that it's going to, you know, increase your metabolism. It's about taking care of yourself. Um, we do know that there's that caffeine. So caffeine, 
in coffee and other things helps increase metabolism. What do you yeah, you for? forgot lean too. That latest, our latest bio comp, oh, body yes. composition formula, lean. Lean is also because of the meta metabolic yes. benefits of some of the ingredients. But I love what you said. None of this is none of this is going to put the work in for you, though, guys. The work is that you get out and you move. You have to move your body that many times a day. I don't, office setting, maybe you're, you know, that's okay. Some a, a boss should respect the fact that you're trying to increase. Right, your, the uptake of your sugar is better for your cells. You'll right. be more productive every two minutes, every thirty. Come on, right? Come on. Um, hydrating properly plays a big role in, yeah. in metabolism. So you need to also make sure, like, hydrating properly is hydrating with electrolytes. It's not just the consuming water. Um, the green tea, green tea is in the super greens. Great for great for uh, metabolism. So there's. Yeah. So many little things that you can do. And there's also many of you out there that are probably taking all of this that are like, yes, okay, I'm doing this for myself. So now all I need to do is, is make sure I'm getting that, those gym workouts in or those, you know, um, structure workouts, mm -hmm. I want to call them. And then make sure you're doing your movements throughout, throughout the day. So again, whether it's two minutes every 30 minutes or whether it's 20 minutes tacked on to the ends of each meal, you know, do what works best for you. I know a lot of times for us for like dinner, I mean, we can do a walk before and a walk after. You yeah, know, and then just little movements throughout the day. So, the goal again is moving your body more because you're contracting your muscles. Um, I feel like I had something else I wanted to. Say. Well, you know, it's funny because I didn't know where we were going to say today. So I was talking about different things, like we were looking at sarcopenia, body composition, how to measure it, the different things, the different types of fat, because metabolic health tends to be a lot about obesity, and a yes. po the population is very obese. There's a lot of you know fifty. 57 to 75 percent is obese or is overweight or obese. Right. So, I, but I'm glad we're not going there. I'm glad we're not going heavy on nutrition and telling you what sugars and should you eat natural fruits and how often and with what. No, we're we're saying, guys, simple, simple. Move your body more throughout the day. Right. If you're doing a big workout, great. You got to do that too, and then move your body throughout the day. Yeah. Just move. And it will it will increase your output, your energy. You'll feel better because of it. Your metabolic, you, your metabolism can correct itself. You know, I was going to start going into like catabolism now, but I don't want to talk about it. Right. It's totally. It does not have It to doesn't be. matter. No. It, it's. It, and there's little things that you can do. Like we know that eating spicy foods, like increase yeah. your metabolism. Sure. Like you can, sure. you can, you know, add that into, I mean, sometimes I haven't done it in a while, I'll tell you the truth, but I used to put red pepper in my smoothie. Just get, it gives it a little kick, but I mean, you mm. can do any little thing add it in there, avoid skipping meals, you know, so often we, 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 um, a lot of people still have this thought that eating less can help us lose weight. And maybe right. at first it does. And then all of a sudden, boom, your metabolism, like completely plummets. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's so right. you need to make sure you're fueling your body, right? Mm -hmm. Just like to keep, to keep it super broad and simple with nutrition, you need to make sure you're fueling your body, right? So your body is constantly getting the nice nutrition that it needs. Um, it never goes into that, like thinking that starvation mode. Yeah. So say you decide that I'm, I mean, there is a lot of people that do the the type of fast where you don't eat all day and then you eat the one meal a day that, that was the OMAD, one meal a day. Yeah. Um, I mean, your body can go into that. I like star, it's a starvation mode. It just kind of slows down, right? Mm -hmm. That's what starvation mode is. Your body, your metabolism slows down preserving everything that it gets because it has no idea when you're going to eat again. So naturally, it's just going to slow itself down. So just make sure you're eating regularly. You know, we don't need to eat all the time. Like we've, we've reiterated Correct, that. Right. But like yep. your three meals a day, they're well-balanced. They're fueled with high-quality nutrition. You're you're getting your, your supplements, your vitamins in. You're sleeping well um, and moving your body. I mean, Simple. It is simple. It is simple. And I mean, so Ryan and I just um, got back from a, an international trip yeah. late last night. Uh, this to tell you was my longest time being on an airplane and it was nine hours, which is extremely long for me. My biggest anxiety was like, I can't sit that long. Like I was getting like, how am I going to do this? But we just kept getting up and it was around about every 30 minutes, but mm -hmm. you know, we're just getting up. We would do the lap around the plane. It was a very big plane. We would stand in the very back where there was an open area and we were doing air squats. I mean, who cares how silly you look? Nobody's, people are probably envious of that. Like, oh, that's so smart. Like they're just getting up and they're moving their body. You just have, you have got to do it. Same thing that goes for in, like in your work environment. Who cares if you look silly standing next to your desk doing an air squat in a dress? I mean, just move your body. Um, I remember when I worked at the hospital.
Yeah, I don't know what's going on with our thing. Guys, we're sorry about that. It looks like we're losing connection. So but we'll wrap can, it up, but though. But you can I hear think. us. You can hear us. It's Are just... there any, any questions that you can breeze through? Just... And, and while he's doing that, again, guys, make sure you like, subscribe to our channel, please. Um, love your comments. Love your feedback. Uh, you know, it really helps us when you are Here's part a good of one. the channel. Fasting, intermittent, and OMAD uh, does start autophagy. Yeah, it does. It cleans up the junk 100%. out of the cell. Mitophagy as well. It cleans out the mitochondria. So that is a good point. We believe in it. We did a Zoom topic on fasting. You should watch that as well yes. because it has a place. It's just... It doesn't have to be done all the time Not either. every day. So, yeah. Man, so boys, gone. guys, I'm so sorry. I think we're going to have to drop. The internet has been poor here, and I think today is cause oh, enough to a lose lot of connection. People, a lot of people talking about intermittent fasting. Um, so it, it is a great, an amazing thing. Um, it does help very, it helps a lot with metabolism, but there's also a fine line. Everybody's different. So there's a lot of women out there that are, are, are stressed. Cortisol levels are high. Um, and, and I'm talking more about, you know, uh, premenopausal females. And then you go into a fasting and maybe you're, maybe it requires, it's it, your body's perceiving it as more stressful and therefore that's increasing your cortisol more and it can backfire again because of your cortisol, but also it can mess up your hormones. So it doesn't have to be these extreme intermittent fastings, like 12 hours, 12 hours is, is the minimum that, that you want to do. So, I mean, I'm pretty solid around probably I'm, I'm around 14, 15, um, just, that's what works for me. But I never want to feel like if I feel like super hungry, that's a cue to me that my body needs to eat and I'm going to break my fast. Right. So, but again, 12 hours, 100% needs to be done daily. You came back. Yeah. It looks like mm -hmm. it looks like it's back on. Okay. Um, there were some questions about sugars and you know, when to eat and how to eat, but uh, yeah, again, not today, not for today. We're good? No, we're not good. Internet is so choppy, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, our bodies need carbs. Our bodies need carbohydrates. But I want you to think carbohydrates coming from vegetables, from um, squash, uh, fruits, you know, even like your, your lower glycemic, your berries. Um, you know, so those are carbohydrates. So it's not necessarily like, I don't like to just say, watch your carbohydrates because we, we need them, but it's like, yes, don't go be eating your bowls of pasta and your breads and your grains. Like you have to, you have to balance it, balance it. Choose, choose your heart carbohydrates. Right. Is the most important take home there. And <clears throat> timing I think matters. Cause there was a comment about when to eat sugar. It's like not the first thing you do when you wake up. How about that? Let's hydrate. I know it's been a few hours. We've been in a fasted state, but let's not go right for a sugar rich coffee creamer. Um, Water, su water supplement right there is a great, great thing before, and then get your movement on. And then of course you need to eat when you're ready, then you eat, but don't start with these little sugar boluses and then don't snack on little candies or cookies in between meals. Right. So I'm trying to read some, did you go up some at all? Yeah. I've been moving all the way down. Then? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. What are the, it's a fasting zoom. We did. Would be yes, helpful. we did do a, do a fasting zoom. Um, and, and, and it doesn't have to be black and white 16 hours. It doesn't have to be a 16, eight, but the minimum that your body needs to be fasting for your, um, for our recovery. So by that, I mean like when we're sleeping, like our body's like, it's, it's resting, it's re it's repairing. Uh, if it's constantly, if there's still food that it's working on digesting, it's not going to be repairing things. So that's the biggest thing. That's why you've got to do that, that 12 hours. Um, now, when it comes to like real autophagy, like those are your longer fast for sure. Definitely. I um, mean, they don't need to be done all the time. Um, but again, check out our fasting Zoom because there's many ways to do it in many different kinds. Like you could choose to do one 24 hour fast, um, you know, a, a week. And a lot of for a lot of people, that's pretty easy if you're eating balanced the rest of the days. So. <clears throat> I totally feel like this conversation has gone right back into nutrition. Right. And I which, love that yeah, about you guys. I love huge. that you're all passionate and have questions around nutrition. But, but the biggest take home, 
the biggest take home that we wanted you to get from today is about the movement. In addition to your workout. In addition to exercise, in addition to structured exercise, right? We, we set our, we know that we're going to work out five days a week. We're going to do it at this time. We're going to take this class. What, we're going to do this YouTube video. In addition to that, it's the moving your body, whether it's walking, air squats, push-ups, whatever works for you. Two minutes every 30 minutes. And if that is not conducive to your lifestyle, aim for the 20 minutes before, 20 minutes after each of your three meals. That really is the biggest take home. And that can be done by everybody. And this is not something that, this is not short term. This is not a quick fix. This is lifetime. Like you, you've got to be doing this. Get your family involved, get your friends involved, right. get your coworkers involved. That's right. Make it a group thing. So that'd be fun, actually, if you had coworkers around. You're, All right, guys, oh, 30 minute it. mark. Let's go. Right, right. Make <laughs> cool. it fun. Don't make Moving. it, don't make it such a chore. When things are be when things become a chore, we tend to do them for a short amount of time, you know, short term, and then we quit. Yeah. So exactly. this is something that we can do. Okay. Um, yes. If there's any and again, sorry about the breaking up um, with the internet, uh, but there's if there's any specific questions, guys, email me, lisa at livegood.com. Um, I know some are coming in, but it's hard to get to everything as it's scrolling up. And check out our website, livegood.com, where you find all of our supplements um, and inf yeah, information about the company. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Look forward to seeing you next Monday. And for those watching on recording, thanks for tuning in. Yes. Bye, guys. Take all care. Right, see you all. Bye.